surprise second LP. Um, I basically decided uh, while I was playing um, some System Shock, I was also playing some of this uh, Doom 64 on the side. And since I had the uh, knowledge fresh in my head, I figured I might as well give this a crack and see if I can maintain two LPs well enough. So uh, you'll notice uh, I have quit game. That's obviously as it tells you that this isn't on emulator. This isn't the um, 60, the actual on console or anything. This is a uh, PC port of the game called. Uh, uh, for God's sake, this happened in the last attempt as well. Uh, this is a PC port called uh, Doom 64 EX, I believe. And you'll notice it's pretty much the same as the regular Doom 64, except it's pretty much as if you could run this thing as a TC in something like a skull tag or something like that. You have full movement, you can jump around and stuff like that, and it's pretty much just the full freedom of the uh, of any other Doom 64 source port. So we're going to go ahead and grab this Berserk Pack and splatter the shit out of our first two enemies, this is a couple of zombie men. You will actually notice that the zombie man and the uh, shotgun guys actually have virtually the same sprite in this game, the only difference being the colour of the pants that they wear. This actually messed with my head for so friggin' long until I realised, oh wait, this is actually a thing, there is actually some kind of noticeable difference between the two. So, anyways, uh, the whole gimmick of this game is, uh, in terms of like the storyline, where it fits into the whole storyline, even if if you would even consider it canon, this basically would take place after Doom 2. The USC decided to completely bombard the um, moon bases where the uh, first two games took place. The first game, at least. Uh, the second was on Earth, obviously. So they bombarded those places with, um, as the manual quotes, apocalyptic levels of radiation. Um... So basically they were just completely empty and then something sort of just happened one day. Some creepy ass uh, demon uh, managed to escape uh, detection because of the radiation. And this demon actually just so happened to have the ability to resurrect any dead flesh that it came across. So basically she restored the life of all of the uh, demons that had been killed and jacked up their power so they're a lot more powerful. This is why you'll end up taking a shit ton more damage from a demon's bite in this game uh, compared to what you would in the uh, first game, first two games. So it's a bit of a challenge, and that's also a bit of a challenge as well because um, uh, this is not my first time trying this. This is uh, actually my second or so attempt, and whoa, life itself, ow. Yeah, you'll actually notice. Um, even the uh, regular zombie men are actually threatening in this game. One bullet from a zombie man did 24 points of damage to me. So now I've got 20 health, I can't afford to take another hit or else I'm dead. And I'm in virtually a lot of trouble right off the bat. So let's see if we can hopefully get our way out of this pickle that we're in. And navigate our way through the first level because if we can't then obviously we suck and we need to rethink our lives or at least I need to rethink my life so here we've got the blue key card in here and over here you'll notice the uh, different texture obviously reveals a secret and there is actually a reason I'm blowing up all these barrels you shall you will see this and you will work this out eventually if you've if you've played Doom 64 and have fair experience with it then you'll know exactly what I'm doing with these barrels so let's actually have a look around and see if there's any more health packs we can grab. Yep, we'll grab that one. Um, is there anything else up here? No, I don't believe there is. Probably should have held on to that uh, Berserk pack and maybe maybe come, come across that a little bit later on in the level once I needed some health. Okay, so we've taken care of the... Uh, there was a barrel right there which we got rid of. So, the whole gimmick is... As you can see, the monsters are more powerful, and you pretty much uh, you're pretty much sent as the only survivor of the original wars against these sons of bitches. Uh, your mission is basically get in there, kill everything, go to hell, kill everything in there, and virtually just pretty much commit mass genocide. That is literally your only mission in this game. So you're pretty much just playing Doom regularly, and you. The mission in this is the most simplified it could possibly be, possibly be, because all of the other missions are like, like when you play the other games, it's just like, 
navigate your way through new bases, like, try to free some people, even though, like, most people would just not actually know what the hell they were doing, because it was pretty much, the story was literally in the manual and absolutely nothing else, and, oh god, a little bit of lag there, um, but overall, this one is the most straightforward mission, get in there, kill shit, there is nothing there is nothing more that needs to be said about this. And this room, as you can see, is filled to the brim with pinky demons. Incredible, isn't it? And in this game, uh, you'll actually notice that the chainsaw is actually very useful. It actually does a lot more damage to these, uh, to the pinky demons in particular. So, in this game, virtually everything is useful, because there are a whole bunch of, um, uh, switches that need to be shot at, and if you and you, if you have to shoot at it, you're better off just using a pistol because that's wasting a single bullet. That's all that's spending up compared to, like, blasting it with a shotgun because shells are a lot more useful than bullets, especially when comparing this shotgun here against the pistol. The, the shotgun actually feels more powerful as well because it's just not like a... It's not like just a... Like a, just sort of like a bang. It's just like a resounding sort of thud bang sort of thing. It actually feels as if it's a more powerful version than the one from before. So anyways, we can now uh, discuss the finer points of not just Dr. McNinja. Uh, I've never actually read that, so I sh really shouldn't be making references like that. But we can also make uh, a mention to the thi the barrels that we've been blowing up throughout the course of the uh, level. Uh, if my memory serves me correctly, this should be the last one. Uh, if, I, uh, if I've blown up one, two, three, that was the four. I think there's like nine or ten barrels in this level. This should be the last one. And what we do is we shoot this barrel and it opens this up. This is the first secret exit of the game. Right, up, right behind the starting point of the first level. So, congratulations, we found a secret level. The bad news, this is the hardest level of the entire game. Wish me luck. <laughs> Alright. So, the positive note here is that we've entered this level with maximum health and armor. This is absolute paramount. I actually walked... In my last attempt, I actually managed to uh, get by with about 150-odd armor and 100 health. So, hopefully, uh, I should not uh, have that much... I should not fail as much. Uh, basically the gimmick here is that there are two exits. There's this exit, and then there is this, just this exit. This is the chicken exit. Basically, if you just want to just leap straight out of there, um, you can just go through that exit and just basically not do anything. Um, in this particular game, the choice of exit that you take will, uh, actually not have any impact on the game. Uh, as compared to the uh, original console version, if you went through this exit and got all three of the keys, you would have access to all of the cheats of the game, which is pretty awesome. But we've already got the cheats anyway, so the only way, so the only thing we'll be getting out of going through the hard exit, which is what we're doing, is basically the, uh, I don't know, the dignity of being able to do it. So the keys, we've got red key. It looks orange, but don't worry, it's a red key because that's the yellow one. And there's the blue one over there. They all have their own in individual challenges. This one seems about as generic as it is, but you know it's just going to reveal something is incredibly fucked. So fucked, in fact, that I'm actually going to save here. So as soon as we grab this red key, bam. We've got freaking arachnatrons. Oh, life itself. You're dead. Die. Die. Thank you. Okay. The fact that I did- the fact that there was a point where I didn't actually have rockets in my possession meant that I ended up switching out to the shotgun, and I could have easily switched back to the rocket launcher, but I was just in the process of winging it, and it didn't quite work out as well as I did. But either way, this still turned out pretty damn well. I only took a mild amount of damage. Now, we have one key, two to go. What's the gimmick with this one? Well, all these moving platforms. If you've played Heretic, you'll know what these... You'll find these to, to be familiar. Um, but the whole the whole point is pretty much the same thing here. But with the extra added challenge, see those weird... See these weird indented pattern things, these faces in the walls? They shoot, uh... They shoot darts. 
And these darts actually are pretty damn... They actually damn, do cause a fair bit of damage if you get hit by them. So the whole idea is to basically dodge these as much as you possibly can while getting from this end of the room to the other to get the yellow key and then back. There is actually a way to navigate these without taking any form of damage whatsoever. It is, it is a possibility. Now the question is, can we do this? Can we pull this off without taking any form of damage whatsoever? Well, we're doing a pretty decent job so far. We've made it to one end. Can we make it to the other? You've got to time it really well. Basically, you just want to stick to this straight line of these platforms. You don't want to go onto any of these. Whoa, life itself. I actually thought I was going to take a shit ton of damage there. I'm actually kind of surprised that I didn't. Oh, you beauty. I actually did it on my first try on my last attempt as well, which was pretty damn awesome. So what we're going to do now for the third and final task is we're going to save again. Because this is actually a bit of a challenge. This is lava. In case you haven't actually worked it out, it's kind of red. But yes, it is lava. Uh... We'll grab this up as a pack just to get it out of the way and then probably save again and see what happens. Alright, now what's going to happen here is I'm going to grab this blue key and then these two walls are going to drop down and reveal a bunch of Hell Knights. So at this and at this point, this, there's, there's this, this is actually a door, that I'm, a doorway that I'm standing in. That's going to close and I'm pretty much going to have literally like this small, like, maybe 20 centimeters, plus just this, to move around to kill these four, uh, Hell Knights that I'm gonna have to go up against. And I have to kill them in order to get out of the room. That's the annoying part. That's why I've got the rocket launcher out. 16 rockets will be enough for me. The question is, am I gonna be able to pull this off? Nope, I'm not. Damn it. I didn't pull it off on my first. I didn't pull it off on my first attempt in the. It, I didn't pull it off at my first crack on the last attempt either. So. Oh, that was painful. Come on, flinch, 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 flinch. Dodge. Oh, life itself. We made it out with 22 HP. Thank God. So we now have all of the keys. But we'll probably have our, but we're probably severely compromised for the next level. Thankfully, it's not actually that big a deal because um, you'll actually notice these things. Uh, these are some really nice goodies to have. I would love to grab that mega armor right now, but the problem is, all three of these items are actually booby trapped. Uh, this one will actually pan the camera away from the first person view and observe you as you're being gibbed, and this one is completely unavoidable no matter what version of the game you play. This one is the only one that's actually obtainable in any form of the game. Uh, in every single form of the game. Basically, uh, the whole point is you try to grab this and this like computer screen thing will drop and basically crush you. You will have no chance of getting out. But if you come in from, I believe, this angle? Yeah, you can get that armor. That is actually, po it is possible to get that in every single fo uh, version of the game. This, however, is only possible dependent on the version that you're playing. It is possible in this game because you're able to jump. In the console version, you would not be able to jump and thus you would not be able to grab this unless there's like a way to grab it and basically like... Basically you'd have to be virtually pinpoint and frame it perfect. Basically like that. I wasn't... I didn't actually know that that was actually going to work. So, um... I guess, hooray for being able to cheese stuff. Well, that's pretty awesome. But yeah, uh, went out through the harder exit. Can we press the space bar? Space bar. Um, the hell? Okay, I took damage from that. Why can't I? Okay, th that, that, that was weird. I didn't think I'd take damage from that middle section, and then... I didn't even know how to describe that. That must have just been... 
the switch being a bit weird because one of the traps was being active. I don't know. It's probably something along those lines, but... That's basically hectic in a nutshell. A very nerve-wracking nutshell, to say the least. So, uh, next time, we're going to be playing the map called... aptly called the Terraformer, which is kind of a weird map in its own, in its own right. So, uh, see you for that.